So I suppose now would be a good time to to get into this rant to get get some get some things off my chest. Um, I had a, a you know a friend over. We we were we were chit chatting and talking and and uh, abruptly the subject of cr- the critical race theory was brought up. And uh, this friend of mine who I've known for a little bit, um, you know, claims to be a centrist uh, and a classical liberal that sort of stuff. Um, you know, was pretty perturbed by that idea. And, I, you know, what happens in, in a lot of these instances where, you know, people will find out that I do, you know, political comedy or talk about history and uh, things like that in, in, in my comedy, they, they want to know my opinion. And what they want is for me to agree with them. What they want is for me to validate and justify their beliefs. Um, and he, here, here's the, the, the thing with that. Uh, we don't fucking owe you that. But plain and simple. You know, if, if, if you think that comedians like me, uh, Lee Camp, Jimmy Dore... Graham Elwood, Ron Placone are here to fucking validate your opinions. Uh, we're not here for that. That's not what we're, what our role is. I apologize if you hear that beeping coming from the outside. There is a truck backing up on my street. Um, but we're not. We're not here to. We're not here to fucking validate your beliefs. And I know. I I could. I could sense that that's what this person wanted. And I'm not trying to bitch this person out or anything or, or, or say that they're a terrible person. It's just I recognize it when I hear it because it, because the conversation shifts very abruptly. And, they, and, and it usually starts with, what do you think of, right? Kind of like leading me to be like, are you going to say the, the thing I believe is correct? Well, probably not. And that was the case, right? So the subject of... Um, what do you think about teaching race to these kids? And I was like, I think it's fine. I think it's great. I think our education system needs to address racism in America. I think our education system needs to talk about the racist history of this country. And this was a very perturbing thing for this person. Oh, how can you teach young kids that way? Young kids. You know, and and, and maybe I didn't read this part of it but from what i was reading it really sounded like high school kids were going to learn about critical race theory right um and and in my opinion if you're in high school you should be learning how to talk about this stuff you should be learning the 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 true history of america and how race has played into it it can't just be i mean you know uh i talked to 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 sabrina savati about this is like we learn Slavery is a thing, and then the Civil War happened, and, and the good guys won. And then it was very cool and very awesome for everybody in America for a long time. World War One was a thing, World War Two was a thing, and uh-oh, racism came back. How'd that happen? So crazy. We said no. MLK, eh, maybe Malcolm X, we're not really going to talk about the Black Panthers, and now everything's fine. Like, that's not how you teach race in America, right? But that's how it's taught currently. It's it's very reductive and it's false. There's a lot of shit that happened between the Civil War and the Civil Rights Movement that kind of led up to the Civil Rights Movement. There's a reason why the Civil Rights Movement happened. And it wasn't just, uh-oh, racism. Uh, where? How did this happen? No, it's always been there. It just kind of escalated and 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 got you know brought more to the to the public light so you know i think kids should be taught this obviously if it's elementary school that this is that's what this individual was saying is that well they're teaching critical race theory to elementary school kids okay so what oh they can't handle it look they're they're young kids they're young kids they're not going to be able to handle it look i moved to this country when i was eight and immediately started facing racism Right, TSA agents were treating me like I was a fucking criminal because I was a brown boy. I didn't know why. I didn't even know what it was. When I came 
and started school in America, immediately made fun of, immediately started getting called names, right? I, 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 the one, this might not have been the first day of school, but it was one of the first days of school. Like an early experience that I had was two white kids chasing me around the playground, tackling me to the ground, picking me up and dropping me on the concrete. And when my head was, you know, bleeding, I got a brown paper towel and for the nurse to tell me to go back and sit down in class. The teachers didn't fucking say anything about it. Nothing. And I didn't know why I was getting this treatment. But I knew something was up. So the argument there of, like, oh, these kids aren't ready to handle something like this. And I mentioned that and he was like, of course somebody picked on me too. Like, this individual has had the same experience as well. Or he was picked on for being a minority and thrown into a locker and beaten up and, you know, you kind of shake yourself off and you move on. No, man, like, that's not how that works. Think of what that fucking did to you. Did you like being shoved into a locker because you were Jewish or brown or black or Muslim or whatever? I bet you didn't. Why do you think that's okay for kids to go through still? Why? Because you experienced it so everybody else needs to experience it? That's crazy. That's sadistic. That's not okay to think. And to say that they're not... Eight-year-olds can't comprehend just the basics of racism, right? You don't need to get into the the heavy detail nitty gritty stuff of how capitalism is involved and how corporations use racism and how the elites have used race to divide people that that that's a little complex you can explain to kids that hey there are people that don't value other human beings because of the color of their skin or the religion they believe in or the culture that they come from do you feel like that's okay? And why do you feel like that is or isn't okay? That's something you can teach an eight-year-old. That is something they should be able to articulate. Why is it okay for an eight-year-old to experience racism but not learn about it? Doesn't that give them some answers? To be like, oh, shit, that's what's happening? You guys don't like... Why don't you guys like me for the color of my skin? I didn't choose this. I didn't choose where I was born. You know? I like the same shit. Years later, after this kid dropped me on my con on, on the concrete, years later, him and I like got along. Why? Because we like drawing. Particularly drawing anime characters. We, we were big fans of doing that. It wasn't until that point... I mean, and, and, and even then I wasn't really allowed to be like, hey, you did some fucked up racist shit to me when I was a kid. I know you didn't realize you were doing fucked up racist shit, but like, that's kind of what you were doing and it sucked. Whether, whether I had an answer for it or not didn't, didn't make it suck less. Having an answer for it is at least like, oh, that's what it is? Well, maybe I can talk to you on, on some kind of human level then. Can we look, you know? And then as they grow older, you can start explaining systemic racism to them right like by the time you're in high school by the time especially if you're a senior introducing the theory that w.e.b dubois said that the civil war and and slave rebellions were an act of a general strike that was that was a form of general strike there you go start with that by the time you're seniors you should be able to talk about it The argument persisted, right? Do you really want kids to learn that the only dynamic there is is, is oppressor and oppressee? Yes, because that's the dynamic that we're living in. That is the dynamic we're living in. So they should know what the dynamic is so they know how to break it. Do you want to continue being an oppressor? Oh, well, all white kids are going to think that they're the oppressors. No, but they can learn that it has been Caucasians, especially European Caucasians, that came here and oppressed the natives, oppressed Mexicans, and took their land. That's what happened. And then they, you know, built a slave trade to work on their plantations and, 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 and earn a living off of other people's work. 
and they didn't feel like they needed to pay these people or or treat them fairly because of the color of their skin. That is a conversation that needs to be had. And by the time you're in high school, you should be able to have that conversation. And what's, what the reality that we're living in is that high schoolers are able to have this conversation. There are protests out there that are led by high school kids. BLM protests, defund the police protests, climate change protests that are being led by, by POC high school kids. So the argument that they're not cognitively ready to handle something like this is just false. So you know, I, I I was I was pretty upset at hearing that, and then they and then they started talking about Marxism. Oh, they're going to learn Marxism. This is Marxist. You really want kids? Yes, kids should learn Marxism. Kids should learn that it's okay to criticize capitalism, and how to do it. What who 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 are the people that criticize capitalism? You know, before you, what did they say? Do you agree with it? Do you see that in the world? How do you argue that? That's called critical thinking. You can't you can't think critically if you don't know all sides of the argument. The history of this country is racist. Lands of the natives were stolen. Most of this nation was built by slaves, black and Chinese slaves. And, and when there wasn't, you know, and this was something else that I was trying to explain. Uh, the personality of this individual is, is a bit disruptive, which is why it's like, okay, I, getting into an argument with this person is very hard. Because if I counter their point, they're going to talk over me. That that's that's a very, um, it's a it's 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 a conservative debate tap tactic. And I've faced that with I, I mean I faced that with my ex wife a whole lot, but I faced that with other other conservative folks. You know, when I would present information based in history and fact, they would talk over me and not let me finish my point. Uh, which at that point, you know. Whoever's involved in that conversation also didn't really hear your point. They only kind of heard this other person. It's the Ben Shapiro debate tactic. You you talk a lot and you, and and other people go, well, he's saying a bunch of stuff. So I guess he must be smart and right. Maybe, but it's not right. You don't start with you don't start with the intricacies of Karl Marx at third grade. Start with, do you think it's okay for people to uh, judge you and hate you based on the color of your skin? Well, that's how people thought, it, it, you know, at various points in American history. And you address those things. You start with basics. And then you start building up, right? And then you can go to something like Tulsa. You can use Tulsa as an example of how race is used as a way to divide class. Right, the history of Tulsa. I did a whole video about it. Is pretty pretty horrific. the The race massacre happened because Black Wall Street in Tulsa in 1921 was thriving, and there was some you know a, a kid was accused of um, uh, of sexually assaulting a white woman. A black kid was accused, and there was no proof of it. Uh, there was an investigation. He was detained by by the the, the sheriff, and over a rumor, they decided to go you know burn down. Uh, the community of Greenwood. They had internment camps, as you just heard. They had internment camps, right? And uh, the the way that these people were, the 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 the, the poor white people were kind of galvanized to do that, is because the rich oil barons in, in in Tulsa at that time were were saying, well, look, they they have all this wealth in their community, and you don't. They have your wealth. That's your wealth. Go take it. Right, the, the, the aspect of manifest... Why should these black people have this? Well, because the black people worked for it. The community invested in itself. You don't see that happening a whole lot. And then they got burned. Literally burned to the ground. White rich oligarchs fueled racial hatred into poor white people that weren't getting 
a great education to begin with, and they went and destroyed a, a prosperous black community. That's how systemic racism operates. It's insidious. There's examples all throughout history of this. And then we give the argument of, have things gotten better? Sure, yes, you know, black people, can, their segregation doesn't exist anymore. Okay, great, that's a victory. You know, black people can vote. That's a victory, kind of. I mean, they're trying to undo all that shit anyway. That's nice, but, you know, black people are still getting killed by cops. Cops, the history of American policing goes back to slave patrols. Where poor, uh, poor white people or indentured white serfs were were paid to go hunt down runaway slaves and keep slaves in line. That's where policing comes from. And look at how it's being used to this day. That's systemic. You can teach that sort of stuff, especially in high school. There should be at least a base. By the time you're a senior in high school, you should at least have a basic understanding of this stuff. You should be taught socialist principles. What was Eugene Debs saying? What was Mother Jones talking about? What are the Black Panthers doing? There's no, there's no, there, you know, there, there, the, 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 the state curriculums don't include the Black Panther survival programs. And that's a double whammy because they were black and they were socialist and they were actually helping people within their community again. And they were targeted and attacked by the FBI. They were assassinated by the FBI. Again, systemic racism. You don't have to teach this sort of stuff in third grade, but you can work up to it. To the point where if you're learning about Richard Nixon, if you're learning about Lyndon B. Johnson... If you're learning about the civil rights movement, Stokely Carmichael, the Black Panthers, Malcolm X, MLK should all be a part of it. Should all be a part of it. That's part of critical race theory. Why not? Oh, but then it just shows that white people are the oppressors. Historically, they are. For a white kid to see that and go, fuck, that's terrible. I do not want to be a part. Great. Welcome to the resistance. The reason why critical race theory, especially on, 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 on you know, the, the center and to the right, is dangerous is because it sheds light on the fact that that America has been lying about itself, being the greatest fucking country on the planet, this bastion of freedom, forever. It makes you confront your own biases and your own privilege as a white person. It makes you admit that to yourself, and a lot of people are not ready to do that. Psychologically, they're not. I walked away from the conversation at a certain point. Um, because it became very glaringly evident that we were not going anywhere with this. Especially because every time I would start, you know, making a counterpoint to this individual's argument, I would get talked down to, which again is like, okay, that's a very white thing to do. Maybe don't fucking do that to the brown person that has studied this shit pretty, pretty intensely over the last decade. And has experienced this. Like, you know, again, here, here's another point to how things haven't changed. There are certain comedy clubs that won't book me as a brown socialist com comedian that talks, speaks truth to power. But they will book a white comedian that speaks truth to power and talks about politics and is very lefty and socialist. Because those clubs are okay with a white person criticizing America, but a brown person doing it means radical terror. It's un-American to do that. Because I'm not being the model immigrant they want me to be. That still exists today. If kids learn that stuff, maybe the next generation of entrepreneurs, maybe the next generation of, 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 of the working class 
won't be divided as much. And again, how will the oligarchs spread divide using race as, as, as a motivator if we all learn that, yeah, it's all bullshit and manufactured and we actually have a lot in common despite our skin colors, religions, and all that. And yeah, we should be fighting for, for, for socialism in this country and a completely new system to operate. But that's scary to people that have invested themselves into this system. And I get that. But if your investment in this system, and I've made this argument before, if your investment in this system means that an entire group of people are ostracized and shoved into poverty and aren't allowed to participate in your thing, you can't claim freedom or democracy. You just can't. You just can't. But I had to get that off my chest a little bit because it was, it was a very frustrating interaction with this person. That uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action and the very last Friday of every single month. They happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10 and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email, and I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com/donate. That's k r i s h m o h a n h a h a dot com slash donate the biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member make monthly contributions uh which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that i just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back uh you also get early access to a certain forkful of noodles videos you get to ask me questions which i'll then respond to either in live streams uh standalone videos or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that i do and then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members uh you get uh addition bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content so tons of things for becoming a uh sustaining member but if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without uh, without the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right, I've got uh, t-shirts, I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it, it's there, probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, it's the merch tab. And uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists. Uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm going to make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more, then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay what you want 
uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play, all of, the, all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate irregularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. Uh, 